Okay, so in this video, we are gonna cover the real bare basics of Service Manager. I would assume most people already know this um, if they're starting this kind of course, because we are gonna get very technical later on. So with that in mind, what does Service Manager do? Well, you can with Service Manager automate IT tasks. Well, the idea of using Service Manager is that we can provide a front end to our end users and other aspects of IT to carry out processes that may uh, be taking up valuable time from your help desk personnel. With Service Manager, we can combine it with a product called Orchestrator, which comes with the whole system center suite, and we can use it so that we can create a front end for end users to fill out information to carry out tasks such as creating new users, requesting um, permission changes, uh, setting up uh, out of offices, this kind of stuff. Anything that where an end user can enter some information and then we can use Orchestrator through either PowerShell or built-in integration packs or even writing our own um, to be able to carry out these tasks in an automated way so that you can kind of reduce the burden on your IT desk um, and they can do more important things than just carrying out basic repetitive tasks. So we would assume that you've got some basic knowledge of Service Desk and that you've got some understanding of the ITIL framework in which Service Desk works around. The idea of the ITIL framework is that we differentiate incident management, problem management, and service re uh, request management. And the way I always look at this is that, you know, there's two different ways of dealing with incidents and service desk, uh, service, service requests. Incidents are things that are breaking and then we should be investigating them to look at why these things keep breaking and what we can put in place to stop them breaking. And service requests are things where that you're not necessarily able to fix the problem because they're just constant requests from our users to carry out processes. So the only way to kind of reduce the service uh, request type of things is either to employ more staff or to look at ways of handing the tools back to our end users or management or departmental management to be able to carry out some of the kind of service requests that we are being asked to do. So in this video, we're just gonna quickly go through the different aspects and the configuration required to make the whole lot glue together. And then we're gonna go on and create a really simple end-to-end -end solution for creating a new user in Active Directory. Now this is really basic. It's All it's gonna do is show the process from beginning to end. It doesn't really represent real world and that's what we're gonna do in the future. So the whole process starts by creating a service request. The service request can be created through the console or it can be done by the end user using the service desk portal. Now we'll come on to this a little bit later, but we'll look about service offerings and service catalogs and what they are. So when we create a new service request, it's always created from a template. So when we create from a template, we have our standard default service request. As we go through these videos, we're gonna look at how we can create our own templates to capture the kind of information that we need for that specific service. Whilst this default layout may be useful for putting in description notes, when we, want, when we come to try and capture information from our end users, for instance, we want to create a new user in Active Directory from our HR department, we're gonna to need to capture information like manager, uh, first name, second name, email address, all this kind of stuff. And because of that, we're gonna to need to create our own templates and actually our own management packs to store all this information in. Now the idea is once you create a service request to capture the information needed, this gets passed over to a product called Orchestrator. So what Orchestrator allows you to do is take the parameters that are gonna be passed in from the service request and allow you to run PowerShell scripts, .NET scripts, you can schedule tasks, you can do emailing. And these things down the left-hand side are called integration packs. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the kind of default integration packs that are available at the moment. And we're going to actually import some to cover the service desk. And we're also gonna actually create our own later on for um, products that are outside the scope of service uh, of Orchestrator. Now while these two products, Service Manager and Orchestrator work hand in hand with each other, they are actually separate products. And therefore we have to set up a link between Service Manager and Orchestrator to one, make the run books available in the service desk and also to allow Orchestrator to be able to uh, take the parameters from the service desk. And this is one of the first things we're gonna set up. If we return back to Service Desk, as an administrator, we're gonna to have to set up a connector to the orchestrator. Now I have orchestrator server installed on the same server as the Service Desk. 
Now you wouldn't necessarily do that in a large organization, but it makes no difference for the purpose of this. I'm always gonna use a computer name. So you would just use the computer name that you installed the orchestrator service on. So under administrators and connectors, we're gonna create a new connector. We're gonna create an orchestrator connector. And we're gonna enter in the service URL. And that service URL looks like this in terms of format. You have your computer name, the port number, Orchestrator 2012 and Orchestrator. And for any of us that have done a bit of development, they'll see SVC on there. You'll see that this is basically a web service. And that's the web service that later on we're gonna be able to connect to, to use other products outside of Service Desk. So we're gonna put in the computer number here, computer name, uh, and the default port when you install Orchestrator is port 81. We're going to test the connection. And we're going to see that this connection has been successful. This allows us to sync the folders. Now what basically this means is when we create the run books in Orchestrator, we're going to need to have to link in the Service Desk Manager those run books, those kind of workflows, the workflows that are going to create our new user, that are going to set an out of office, that are going to um, create uh, inboxes, etc. They're going to be all created in Orchestrator and we need to be able to associate the two together. So what this connector does in Service Manager is basically just bring in a list of all the run books that are available. So when later on we connect the two together, we'll be able to see that list. And we go through and we create. Okay, so we've now got our orchestrator um, connector and that's gonna be pulling in from orchestrator. We can synchronize now. Now, we will cover this later, but just for your knowledge, under library, run books, this is where the run books will get pulled into. And as you can see, there's already brought one in called new run book. And if we go back to here, we'll see this was the new run book here. And these are what we'll use later for connecting the two together. Now that we've set up the service manager to talk to Orchestrator, we now need to set up Orchestrator to be able to carry out um, tasks and jobs within the service desk manager. So we may want Orchestrator to close a service request when it's finished, or we may want it to create a new incident. And all of these need to be done through integration packs. Now down the left hand side, these are what we call integration packs. And these are packs that have been written either by Microsoft or third parties, or even yourself, to be able to carry out specific uh, jobs from with different applications. Now at the moment, you'll see there's actually nothing relating to Service Desk here. Um, so we're not gonna be able to kind of pick up any of the information that's been gonna be sent across from Service Desk. So to do this, we need to run, uh, download some integration packs. And if we go to Microsoft's website, so if we Google Orchestrator System Center Integration Packs, we can see that under on a TechNet site here, we have the integration packs for System Center 2012. Okay, here you can see a list of integration packs that are in addition just to System Center. So we've got things for VMware, um, HP, Active Directory, Exchange, uh, and we're going to come back to some of these later because we're going we're gonna to need some of these. But we want to download the integration pack for System Center. Okay, if we look at this, this is System Center 2012 and SP1. Um, we want R2. And if we come back to Google, we can see actually the next link down is the System Center for uh, R2 Orchestrator. We click that and we can see that there are two files. Here's the 2012 IPs, integration packs, and uh, the integration toolkit, which is something that we will use later when we come to create our own integration packs. And we're just gonna download these. Okay, so those integration packs have finished downloading and I've expanded them out. And you can see that we have a number of integration packs from that, from that download. We've got SharePoint, FTP, uh, Exchange, and we've got a number of integration packs here for um, Service Desk, which is the one we want there. We're gonna use some of these other configuration manager um, and 
Ops Manager later on. Now to import these integration packs, we need to do that through a tool called the deployment tool. And the system center, we have the deployment manager. So we're coming to the deployment manager here and we can see down the left hand side, we have our integration packs. If we right click on here, we need to register the packs before we can deploy them. And we go through the deployment wizard and select the integration packs that we're looking for, so service manager. Hit next and finish. And we can see that that's gonna bring in the integration pack for service manager. At the same time, we're also gonna bring in the integration packs for Active Directory. Now we've registered the integration packs, but we haven't actually deployed them out to the servers yet. To do that, we right click and we'd say deploy. And we select the integration packs that we wish to deploy and we select the orchestrator server that we're going to deploy to. And we can do this at a scheduled time, or we can do this immediately. Obviously we haven't set up any run books yet, so there's no risk of us doing this at the same time a run book is running. If we go back into our orchestrator run book designer, you will see that we've now got some additional integration packs down the left hand side. We've got some Active Directory stuff and we've got some Service Desk Manager. Now that we've brought in our integration packs, we now need to tell Orchestrator where our Service Manager is and where our Active Directory is. And if we were doing Exchange, where our Exchange server is. Whenever you bring in integration packs with like configurable options, if you go up to the Options button, you will see the information or the, 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 inf um, the integration pack options here. So we set up our Service Manager first. Connection successful. Okay, so that's now gonna allow us to communicate back to the service manager. We're also gonna set up our Active Directory. So we now have all our connections set up. In the next video, we're gonna create a very simple uh, task where we will create a new user in Active Directory.